Greetings fellow travelers, welcome to modernizing Skyrim's combat, the minimalistic version. Now I've made a mod list with all of the things I am personally using, but this time we are not going to use MCO, we are actually going to use or apply mostly vanilla animations and improve the vanilla game without using that many mods. If you have issues with MCO, rest assured that this video is going to help you sort your combat. I will do my best to both showcase the mods and also explain to you how to install them and how to make them work. Also something really quick, if you guys want to show your support, the only thing you have to do is subscribe, that way you are going to help me find my audience, only a very small percentage of you guys are actually subscribed, thank you and I'm sorry for the long intro. Everything will be included in the video description and again you can ask me anything you want to know. This video will help you make Skyrim feel like a better version of Skyrim without changing the identity of the game too much. The first mod you want to grab is True Directional Movement. For obvious reasons, this is the best overhaul when it comes to having full control of your character. Make sure you read the description and get all of the requirements here. If you have issues installing Project Nemesis and you cannot find the menu to work, try deleting Project Nemesis from your data folder and manually installing. Next, of course, we have the True Hue Addition, which is going to make it where you will be able to have a lock system with health bars as you can see here, you will have boss bars for different bosses and it will completely change how the game looks, you will also have a nice loot menu as you see over here, a boss system and essentially this is a very cool hue that we are going to use upon true directional movement. Next you want to go and get jump behavior overhaul, this is going to change how the behavior of jumping will play into the game, that is why you want to go and grab the smooth weapon jump animation. This is going to add a nice smooth animation for you jumping with your weapon and it's going to help enhance the combat slightly more. Next we're going to get precision. Precision is the ultimate combat mode that is going to put everything together. All of the mods I'm including in this episode, I am putting them specifically for those to work with precision. Precision adds a bunch of features. It adds dynamic collisions to your weapons, it adds recoil which means every time you're going to hit an enemy or an object or something you will feel the recoil of your weapon, your weapon will constantly get blocked by the environment, the rocks, the holes or whatever lies in your environment, so this is going to make the combat so much more dynamic, you're having this very nice swing effect that you're seeing here, there is some nice effects in addition, you have hit stop, camera shake, you can change anything you like through MCM menus. This is an absolutely must for any playthrough when it comes to modernizing the combat. It's the best mod ever created when it comes to that and I would 100% recommend you to get. Next we have Scar Skyrim Combos AI Revolution. This is the best mod you can get when it comes to increasing the difficulty of the AI, making your enemies to stack combos aka hitting you non-stop without having weird poses and I would recommend you to go to the requirements and also grab the combat path revolution which is going to change how the pathing goes with enemies. Then go and grab smooth cam which is going to add a third person camera which is dynamic, it's beautiful, it's amazing, it looks exactly as I'm showing you from this footage and you're going to grab any preset to load it. I am using the vanilla enhanced tool, it's very similar with vanilla just slightly better. This is how you change and tweak the smooth cam in your game, you go to MCM menu, you go to smooth cam preset sets and you check the preset you have installed. That's how simple it is guys. Next you want to go and grab Detection Meter NG. This is the modern version of the original mod. It's much better, it works amazingly well and it adds a Detection Meter similar to the modern games. It adds this really nice icon as you can see and it makes stealth much more dynamic. Go also and grab First Person Detection for First Person and solve some of the issues when it comes to improved camera. Lastly for the behavior mods you want to grab the new addition. The 
SMC Sky Motion Control. This in my opinion is a better version than a movement behavior overhaul. I've covered this mod on my previous episode, it adds acceleration mechanic to both hawking, running, sprinting and jumping. Now the transition from running and hawking, it's much more smoother, it feels much more dynamic, you get a jump boost, it works amazingly well with the mods I'm including here. So make sure to read and get the requirements and install it. We're using again open animation replacer for all of those modes. Lastly before moving to first person animations, something very important to get, Karim Souls. Reimagine. This is the updated version of the mod and what it does very simply it makes it where you cannot pose while playing the game. That makes it where every time you want to equip a weapon you just cannot freeze time like you are some sort of god or something like that so it makes everything much more dynamic including all of the mods we have. Lastly for the behavior engine type of mods we are using a proofed camera which is the best first person camera mod on the Nexus. I was using the beta version of this mod for many years and I'm glad that Aran's CNL has managed to upload it on Nexus. Then on top of that we are getting the comprehensive first person animation overhaul which completely changes how first person works with bows, swords, two handed weapons, anything you want to use to kill Nazim, I mean to fight your way through your adventures and this is one of the best mods when it comes to first person. So what are you waiting for? Go out there and grab. Those are all of the behaviors we are using and now I'm gonna do this part with you. You should follow step by step and do exactly what I'm doing in order to have dodge work in your game. Again, we're keeping this very minimalistic so the very first thing you want to do since we are not going to use modern dodge, instead we're going to use something much more lighter and this is TK dodge. Go and grab TK dodge Ari right here. This is the one we are going to use. Once you install it successfully, you are going to open the mod navigating through your mod organizer of your choice and you are going to select everything other than the meshes and press delete and delete everything. Now you are going to tk.re and you are going to go to the files and download everything you see here, the main mod here which is going to replace the outdated tk dots that we installed previously and it is going to override the files because we've deleted everything. You're going to go ahead and grab the sound version here and you're going to go and install again all of the mods here which are going to play very nice sound animations every time you dodge which is going to make it more realistic and not this momentum when it comes to that. Now something else, once you install successful TK dodge, something you need to do, have all of the requirements here, iframe generator, make sure you sort your load order and lastly you want to go to TK dodge RE, open file in manager go to plugins go to the any file and here this is a personal preference there is the dodge key which pretty much tells you which key you want to use for your dodge to take place now i have included the dx scan codes on the video description i like to use 46 that goes for c and that's it something in addition go and grab simple tk dodge sidestep and install it and the reason why we're getting this is that as i'm showing you now on first person this is the best i found when it comes to playing on first person first person dodging it's going to feel so much better and it also has a nice step dodge that being said let's move to our combat modes we're going to use archery rebalance which completely rebalances archery when it comes to skyrim it adds recoil if you are using let's say plate armor the arrows will move back it adds many cool features you're going to also go and grab the location damage plugin and install it on top of that so every time now you are going to hit someone on the head or the foot it's gonna have different damage values and that being said we are only using two combat modes we are using first of all wildcat combat of skyrim everybody's talking about this mod so i don't really have to explain it it adds a wound system you should open your mcm menu once you install this and disable most of its features because precision and valhalla combat have those as well. You are going to disable timed blocking. The only reason we are using Wildcat is for its dynamic wound system. Completely overhauls the combat. And then we are using Valhalla combat which pretty much adds everything. It works with everything so go ahead and grab it. It's an amazing mod. There is a full configuration which you can pick and select anything you want and anything you don't want. It works on top of precision. It makes the game so much better. It adds stand and execution 
a POIS system and I would recommend to disable time blocks and you should never use it with shields of stamina which sadly I've put it on my very first videos and I'm sorry for that. Also go and grab the Valhalla combat backstab back fix which fixes pretty much this minor thing with backstabbing people with Valhalla combat. Let's move to movement animations. For this part I am only going to include all of the things that will change the combat. Anything else in addition you can ask me in the comment section or you can tell me what you guys are using and the first thing I want to suggest is the absolutely average animations great sword first and third person this is an absolutely beautiful mode that very few people know about it and it adds those animations that you see here they feel like they belong to vanilla Skyrim they just look very similar but just slightly different much more immersive much more better and smooth and they only work for great swords I use the vanilla animations because they look the best when it comes to precision because of the the dynamic pathing of that mod. That being said, I love using this one because it's very simplistic, it doesn't take almost no scripts at all and again, the number one priority in this video is to save performance, stability and have a very similar experience with vanilla scarring. Next, we have the crosshair aligned crossbow which makes it where every time you use a crossbow it feels like you're playing Battlefield or Call of Duty. Very simplistic mod but adds so much when it comes to combat using crossbows and it is something something I 100% recommend. Now for magic, it really comes down to preference, whatever you like. The final first special magic animation, it feels much more simplistic. Make sure to use the version 7 when it comes to the installation because it uses all of the newer animation. That's pretty much it for first person. I am using Vanagrad animations for 100 power and normal attacks, for archery animations, bore stealth and non-stealth ones, and Vanagrad for third person crossbow animations. I'm very sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. I always had the issue pronouncing this name. And then I'm using Leviathan animations only for the great sword sneak attack. And I like how the vanilla idle stance looks for 200 swords. So I'm keeping it like that. If you want anything else, you can put your own animation. I think the vanilla one looks pretty badass. And I'm keeping it that way. Then we have Goethe animations. Which again, I'm using them for both male and female walk and run animations. The sprint animations. Magic spell cards and conditional shouts. Make sure you are not using the kata version aka the conditional armor type animations. It is outdated and I would 100% recommend you to use open animation replacer which is pretty much the same with dynamic animation replacer and just grab the main files of all of those files and install them. Do not use the kata add-on it is not going to work. We have few more additions like EVG conditional idols which are going to play every time you take damage or you are wounded. It adds so much more to the immersion of the game. I also use waiting water, so make sure to grab waiting water and install that if you really want something much more realistic. That being said, we have the smooth move set and the smooth random equip animation. The smooth move set is going to play a bunch of movements every time you have acceleration, you walk, you swap weapons, and pretty much it enhances all of the idle animations and the smooth random random equip animation, it is going to play animations every time you change an item as you can see here. Last but not least, we have extra stuff such as the dynamic impact slash effect which is going to add a much more better looking slash effect and it's a must in my opinion. We're having the dynamic werewolf sprint which is going to play a dynamic sprint for you to accelerate and use it. One of my most favorite mods actually. First person target locking fix for true directional movement which is going to make it as you can see from the pictures, this is how it looks with true directional movement and this is how it looks with this mode, so it's going to make it much more better. The simple degradation which is going to add a condition to every weapon. Now any item you can find, either you having that item or an NPC, it will have conditions. This mode is actually scriptless, it's a very small mode and the way this happens, those conditions are added only for you to enhance them with smithing. Your weapon 
weapons who not lose condition, this adds so much more to Smith when it comes to game and in my opinion it changes how every time you find a weapon, it's not the best weapon you can find but it actually has different types and it makes you think very carefully if you want to boost your smithing or not and I think it's a game changing mod for me. Then we have the eviscerate weapon sound completely changes the sound of weapon impacts, it is one of the best ones and we have the footstep sound overhaul, you can only get it outside of Nexus, it changes completely how the footsteps sounds when you use light armor, heavy armor or no armor or just something in between. Then we have hyper news, frost spell audio which changes the sounds of frost spells which sounds so much more better and vocaris that changes the sounds for conjuration spells. And then go and get, I'm sorry guys I cannot do English, it is this mod right here, it changes how the fire spells play. When it comes to Skyrim make sure you have sounds, compendium, it's a requirement for all of those mods to take place and lastly two mods that we have. We're going to enhance the dragons by go to Delta Rider and grabbing the infinite dragon variants which is going to use vanilla assets to enhance the dragons without making this mod script heavy like any other dragon overhaul and you will always fight different dragons and also go and grab the dynamic random dragons. It's going to change the conditions from which the dragons are going to fight you so you will find them out in the world on places where you never fought them before and it's going to completely change how you play Skyrim, trust me when it comes to that. And this covers the minimalistic combat overhaul for Skyrim. Combat is never going to feel the same, I will be playing Starfield and upload Starfield content so if you want to watch both Skyrim and Starfield content when it comes to modding, feel free to leave a like, subscribe and comment down anything below. Thank you for watching guys, I want to wish you happy modding and until next time it was me Kavu and take care.